wow. Yeah. Here you are. Yeah. What was that journey like for you? Why did you decide to do that? My goodness. <laughs> Hello again, friends. We are here with Martha Raider. She is with Raider Leadership, and we are so excited to have her with us in Colorado Springs at the Women in Automotive Conference at the Cheyenne Mountain Resort. Welcome, Martha, and thank you thank for joining you. us today. Thank you. Glad to be here. Thank you so much. We're glad that you're here. Tell us a little bit about how you found yourself into the automotive industry and what you're doing today. In the industry alone. Oh, gosh, that was a lot of years ago. Um, so when I was uh, in a sophomore in high school, I had, I, I took home ec one, one year and I could people, women of course didn't do it, but I decided instead of taking home ec two years in a row, I would take wood chop Ooh. and they're, they're like, what? You know? <laughs> so I took wood chop and uh, the wood chop teacher a couple of times during this class took me to the side and he says, you know, you really think you should think about going to the big city and you should you should work for General Motors. Ooh. And I'm I'm looking at him like, what? And where is this coming yeah. from? You know, I just I just kind of shook it off and thought, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, a year later, I was talking to him at some school event, and he says, "So have you thought about that? You know, are, are you you know?" Have, and I said, "Not really." And he said, "Well, let me just tell you a contact." So I was in this very, very small town, not even a stoplight. Oh, boy. Wow. Okay. 500 K through 12th grade. And um, he said uh, there was, uh, it was Vicks Mackinac Bar. And the family, one of the, the family members worked for GMAC Financial Services, which is the finance, was the finance arm of General Motors, now Ally Bank. He said his name is Wayne Englehart. And he said, um, if you get a chance, you should reach out to him. Mm -hmm. And so I, again, I just like, you know, so uh, I was on my way to a wedding. I was, uh, I think I had just graduated from high school and I stopped in Vicks Mackinac Bar to meet someone. And um, I see this guy on the corner of the bar sitting at the bar. And I thought, you know what, that guy, he looks like an Engelhart one of the family members. Uh -huh. And I thought, I'll bet that's Wayne. That's the guy I'm supposed to meet. So I went over to him and I said, Hey, hi, Wayne. Are you Wayne? He said, wow. yes. And I said, Tom Pablo said I should meet you and I should come and apply for job. And he said, and now this is, this is someone who I don't even know where this came from in me. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'd shook in someone's hand before. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so it was really, um, a bold move for me, but it just came out. Anyway, the next thing you know, that's where I was working. Wow. That's how it all started. That's impressive. Yeah. That's awesome. It's it's kind of a crazy story. I love that story. Yeah. yeah. So tell us a little bit about, so you, in 2015, you got your PhD. Yes. Right. She is Dr. Rader. And you were <laughs> in your fifties. Yes. And all the time we hear, oh, I'm too old to go back to school. I'm too old to learn something new. I'm too old to start a new business. Right. Wow. Yeah. Here you are. Yeah. What was that journey like for you? Why did you decide to do that? My goodness. <laughs> um, so I, um, I went to Northwood for my MBA and truthfully, I fell in love with the behavioral classes, organizational leadership, okay. those kind of things. So I said, you know, I, I want to teach for Northwood someday. Uh, and so anyway, I stayed in contact with Northwood and, and one of my professors that I had had, I had lunch with her and one day and uh, she says, so when you, when do you want to start teaching? And I said, well, I, I'm not really sure, but she goes, well, I want to tell you, you need to go back to school. Mm. And I said, what? I said, I can't just teach. And she goes, well, you really need to go back to school. And I said, well, there's just no way I'm going to get a doctorate. There's, there's no way. Truth is, and I, she says, well, what's, what's, what's going on? Can you just tell me why? And I, I just said, I just don't want to go to school. Well, it was fear. It was absolutely fear. And um, so I started just kind of dabbling to look at different degrees. And next thing you know, six weeks later, I was enrolled in a PhD program and 
I never looked back. It was, it was a phenomenal experience. Um, it was hard, um, a lot of reading, but I loved the experience, loved it. And I can now teach organizational leadership, leadership management, culture, diversity courses. Um, my real love is what I'm doing right now, which is Raider leadership, coaching, training, and consulting. And if I can help people understand some of the blind spots that they have, we all have our strengths. We all have our weaknesses. And if we haven't learned anything from this conference this week, right, is that um, we all need to grow. And we all are our, our past experiences make we who we are today our strong points, but it also develops other things in us that cause us to make decisions and act in certain ways that if we that can be brought to our attention and we can understand those things, we can excel. Right. We can be so much more successful. And that's what I want to do. I love it. That's wonderful. Who is your ideal um, person to work with when coaching leadership? Is it a young person, older person, someone who's been in the industry or anybody? Yeah. And so I have had an array of people. I had when I was um, I had a um, uh, someone just about to graduate from college and she came into my office as a professor and she said, will you? Will you mentor me? And it was just so funny because I've never had a young person like that just approach me and ask that. It was a phenomenal experience. Um, so I don't really have an ideal person. I don't, you know, it doesn't have to be women, doesn't have to be men, probably more are women. Um, but I work with companies that, that I coach, you know, a lot of people. Uh, so I want to work with people who want to improve right That's, that, that want to so invest important. in themselves because when you're working with people who just who really aren't intentional about it mm -hmm. it's hard to make a difference sure right. it's hard to make a difference and we all, that's what we all want right is to really make have an impact on people's lives so that they can have more fulfilled lives right absolutely over your career who would you say has made the biggest impact on you i love Shasta's questions mm -hmm. <laughs> They just come out of nowhere. That's really tough. You know, I had a mentor and it's, it's really funny because at the time I didn't really realize the impact that she's had on me. And just recently we've reconnected and her name's Kim Zymack and she's with, uh, she's in Detroit. She's with the Automotive Women's Alliance. Um she has had a major impact on me. I mean, there's been so many people, you know, so many people. If that, if that person early, early, or I, I can't call it a career, but when I worked for GMAC Financial Services, I had a, a group vice president who evidently I made an impact on somewhere. Okay. I don't even know how that happened. Right. Um, he gave me a chance because they weren't going to promote me without a degree. And he gave me a chance. He said, if you commit to getting your degree, we'll, we'll give you this promotion. He gave me, they gave me the promotion. I never looked back. I got my undergrad. I got, you know, so there's been so many people. It's a hard, and I don't want to leave anybody out. So I hate that question. <laughs> Okay, all day. Oh, I hate that question. Okay. So you have a session in one o'clock, one o'clock yep. in an hour. Mm -hmm. What are you speaking on today? So I'm speaking on, uh, you know, we all love conflict, right? Do you guys like conflict? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Some people do. Thank you. Some people like conflict. Other people don't like it. Some despise it. Some will run from it. The truth is we need to embrace it. Okay. Um, as you said, healthy conflict. We have to have healthy conflict. Otherwise, uh, a lot of things happen, right? right. Or don't happen. And so I'm going to talk about, we're going to, it's, it's going to be about personality and conflict, how the two intersect and how you can, once you understand what that means and how that is, that you can be more successful. Okay. I love it. That's awesome. I can't wait to be in there. I hope that yeah. I'm able to make it. We might not be able to, but if I can, I'm definitely okay. going to be in there for sure. Okay. We have podcasts all, all right. day long. Today. So I have, a, I have a, I have a, one of the Northwood students that had to leave today. Okay. She wanted to be in there. If you guys can't be in there, maybe we could have a group of people. We could do it on Zoom. 
Yeah. Ooh, have you I'm done sorry, have you yeah. done um, personality assessments? Oh, well, uh, we've yeah, done we Myers Briggs. Okay. The disc assessment. Yeah. Did, okay. Which okay. one are you? Um. I, well, this is yeah. going to be a short, like five minute thing because mm -hmm. it's just very short. It's only forty minutes. Right. right? Mm -hmm. Um. But I I'm certified in disc. Um, okay. That's cool. my favorite. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. That, that one's the one I know the least about myself. I don't even remember what my letters. Yeah. Are. Well, this is this is going to be it's going to be animals. So some people might think it's cheesy, but it's quick. They can do it themselves, a five-minute personality yeah. test, mm -hmm. and then we can use that. I think it's cool. I think it's really neat. That's yeah. awesome. And I would be willing to bet that most of the people in here are probably type A. Would be my guess. You mean type A being a D or like yeah. I, D-I? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty yeah. red personalities would yeah be, yeah would be what i would expect yeah. I've, I've heard a couple of people though that were like oh i'm not type a i am right. not a red see. i am you right. know i'm not it but a lot of them yeah yeah so you did the colors mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay cool we did we all did right. all right well martha it has been a pleasure having on having you on the show today thank you so much for taking the time out of your day i do have one more question for okay you. we'll re-wrap up what is one piece of advice anything anybody coming into this industry male female young old I don't care. What is one piece of advice that you would give them? What the advice that I wish I had had early on in my career, it was to ask for advice. Yes. Was to ask for ask advice. The questions. Right. And not be afraid to go beyond your boss to ask for advice. Um, you're not going around your boss. You're just saying, hey, I would like to do this and I'm not really sure how to go yeah. about this. Do you have any advice for me? Where, where do you think I should start? Uh, and, and, you know, this was, and this is one of the pieces of advice that I got from Kim Zymet, okay. this, this mentor from a long time ago. And uh, I did just that and it opened up a whole new world for me. That's awesome. And I think that it says something too. I mean, I tell my employees, there's nothing wrong with going above me to go to somebody else or to get advice from somebody else. I don't have all of the advice that you're ever going to need in your life. She has different life experience than I do. Other people that we work with have different ex life experience than what we do. There's Sometimes, especially for... Um, if you were in, if you were probably not, you guys have been doing this, but one of the speakers yesterday um, talked about um, being pigeonholed. Okay. You could still be a really darn good worker. You're training every person that comes in. Right. And for some reason you've got this, this stigma that started 10 years ago mm -hmm. and, and it's a bias that, that your boss might have. Right. And so now you're stuck. Right. And and so when you start to branch out and ask other people for advice, then it opens up a different right. world. Well, and everybody has these different perspectives too. Yes. I mean, yeah. we, we could probably ask, you know, five different people who took what takeaways out of the first keynote yesterday. And we'd get five different answers. Right. Oh, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, you can sit sure. and watch the same thing, listen to the exact same right. words and take completely different right, right right what has been I, and i said we i only had one more question for uh -huh. you, but now i have another one what has been your biggest takeaway from this conference from this conference um uh, i think it was jake uh and it was your personal brand uh you know i i i don't talk about myself you know i just don't talk about myself i i have a lot of stories i had a tough upbringing um i'm a I'm a PhD. I'm a doctor. Right. And people say, oh, she's a doctor, you know, and, you know, but people don't know about me. Right. They don't know where I came from and how hard, you know, what I had to do to get to where Absolutely. I am. Um, and so, so, so the personal brand and being able to talk about, you know, yourself and those kind of things, I think is a lot more important than I've ever given that credit to. So, but it just goes to show that you are never too old to learn new things. Oh, for sure. Take oh. new takeaways away and continue to grow in life. And I think that the, I'm too old to do this, that is just hogwash. Yeah. Frankly. Yeah. I think Lifelong that, long learner. Some people think about that is, you know, it, maybe it's really big things. Just little things are good. Yeah. Little things are helpful. Yep. Little things every day is, uh, will really help people grow and, and be more successful. Absolutely, for sure. Yeah. Well, Martha, thank you so much yeah. for joining us today. You have been wonderful to have on the show. You guys really are awesome. It. 
I, I just, it's really, I love what you're doing and thank you so much. Big hugs. Thank you. In a world where you can be anything, be kind because you never know what battles others are facing. So whenever you go out into the world this week, remember to light it up. I am Jess. I'm Shasta. And this is Martha. And we've been the chicks in charge. Thanks Thank for watching. Thank you so much. Yay. You've made it this far. And if you want to help the chicks out and add some value, make sure you subscribe right now. Click that little red button down below. Do it. Do right it now. now.